I'm Alyssa from Alyssa Threads and I'm so excited to share my spring pattern with you guys. This is ME2074. I've really, really been into rompers this last year and I wanted to bring that to life. I'm obsessed with how this pattern turned out. The best part about it is you can sew it in either knits or woven. So you can choose between, you can see here, um, on my romper version, I did white linen. And then over here on my pink dress version, I did a pink pointel, but it was kind of a thicker pointel. And I love how both of them turned out. There's two different collar options as well. So this is completely customizable to how you guys would want it. And I'm so, so excited to share this with you guys. So let's get sewing. Okay, let's get started. I'm so excited. Here is my spring Nomi ME2074 pattern. So it has two different views. View A is a dress, and then you can choose between a collar, like a standing collar, or no collar. And then this one is a romper. And you can see that this one is in a knit, and this one is woven. This pattern can be made in knits or wo wovens, which is my favorite part about this pattern because I could not decide which one. So I was like, can I do both? So it's graded for knits and wovens. And you can see the suggested fabrics are cotton blends, gauze, knit, jersey, linen blends, more knit, sweater knits, terry knit. Um, and then interfacing, you'll just need lightweight fusible facing. And then for notions, you'll need, for both views, you'll need buttons, and some rib knit for the wrist or any type of knit for the wrist. Um, so today I'm gonna be sewing view B, the romper with the standing collar. And I'm gonna show you which pattern pieces we're gonna need for that. So we have piece one and this is gonna be the front. And I wanna show you on here where it has the different views. This is for view A, which is the dress. And if you're sewing view B, you're just gonna take this out right here. But if you wanna save it so that you can do either view, then I would just trace it there and leave that piece there like I'm gonna do. And then I also want to mention that this piece is cut on the fold, but only from here to here. Up here, this part right here where this little notch is, to the neck that piece is not cut on the fold so go ahead and cut this but this piece down here is to be cut on the fold then we have piece two and this is the back and this is not cut on the fold these are two separate pieces here three is for the pockets and you'll need two of those this is four and five you can see how it has this neckline here these are for, this right here is for the placket and the placket facing. So you'll need four of these because you'll need one for each side. So this is gonna mirror this. And then you'll need two of those for the facing. This one is the outside. And then you'll need two of these, the back, because one will be the facing and the other one will be on the outside. Piece six is the sleeve, and these are big, voluminous sleeves. That is my signature piece. Every pattern that I've had has had big, beautiful sleeves. So you'll need two of these. For piece seven, this will be for the sleeve band, and this is what you'll be cutting in knit if you're sewing woven or knit. This piece has to be in knit so that it can stretch and fit around your wrist a little bit better. So piece eight is only if you're sewing view B, the romper version, and this is the collar, and this is only if you're sewing the tall collar version, which is also view B. You can mix and match whatever collar you wanna put um, with whichever view of the dress or romper. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to sew the collar with the romper. You can sew it without, but this you'll only need if you're doing the collar version and you'll need two of these and interfacing. For step two, we're going to stay stitch the neck edge of the front pieces. And then we're going to reinforce the dots down here on the front. Okay. We are also going to stay stitch from here all the way down and over, kind of like a little U. I have done my little stay stitch. My thread is the same color as my fabric, so it's hard to see. Um, 
we are gonna take our scissors and we are just gonna clip to those little dots. Be very careful not to go through your stitching or that will end very badly and you'll have to do it again. The stay stitching helps prevent the fabric from ripping as you're sewing. So we'll be taking the stay stitches out once we're all finished. So that's why we do that. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing on our back pieces. We're gonna stay stitch the neckline and then we're gonna sew our center back together at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. The back pieces together and then I went ahead and overlocked those and pressed them flat. Now we are gonna sew the back and the front shoulder pieces together, so these pieces. Okay, now we're gonna sew the shoulder pieces together at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and I'm also gonna press those and overlock them. Okay, now that we're done sewing the bodice together, we're gonna sew our placket facing pieces together and our back facing piece, so make sure you're doing all of your interfaced pieces together. And then we're gonna sew our placket pieces and our back facing that don't have interfacing on them together. And I'm gonna sew these at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'm also going to press them. Once we're done sewing our facing pieces and our placket pieces together, we are going to sew a stay stitch, kind of like a little L right here where this dot is on the outer part of our facing and placket here and here. And we're going to do that on all four sides of this. Here's an up close view of how I sewed the stay stitching. You can kind of see it better on this side where the interfacing is right through there. Just like we did on the front of our top when we put those stay stitches in. We're gonna just clip to the circle right there so that this can open out this way. Just like that. Okay, with right sides together, we're gonna pin down this placket, making sure our circles are matching each other. And then down here at the bottom where this circle meets that circle, we're gonna put that Make sure that lines up well. So make sure your notches line up here. There's two notches that are on the front bodice and the placket. And then here where we have these two dots, we're gonna open the facing up. It's kind of gonna make a square around here. And I know this feels a little funny now, but once we sew this, it's gonna lay nice and perfect and you won't even notice. And then we're just gonna pin the facing to the bodice all the way around. I'm making sure my seams match up. And on the facing, don't worry about overlocking it because it will be completely enclosed and on the placket. Okay, now we're back at the front again, and we're gonna open that where we snipped it down to that dot, and you're just gonna open it and keep pinning it down, making sure that our notches line up. Now that we have the entire placket pinned around the front and back, we are gonna sew this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, starting and stopping at our dots down here. So we're gonna start here, go all the way around, and then stop here. So before we start sewing this piece, I'm gonna show you how to sew it on the sewing machine when you get to this little dot so that it'll lay nice and flat. Thank you. 
Okay, as I'm coming up to my dot here, I'm just gonna sew really slowly until I get up here. And then I'm gonna stop once I get to that dot and I'm gonna lift up my presser foot and I'm gonna turn my work so that it's flat with the neckline now. And then I am going to continue to sew my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way back to the next little notch on the other side. Okay, I'm coming up to my dot again, and I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did on the other side. Just continue to sew up to this dot and then stop, leave my needle down and turn my work. So I'm just gonna sew nice and slow, sew to the dot. And then I'm gonna turn my work. Kind of flatten it out a bit. Make sure it's all nice and straight. And then I'm gonna continue sewing straight down. Now we're gonna take the front of our pieces where we sewed the facing right here. We are just gonna snip that off and same on this side. Just go ahead and snip those little pieces off so that they lay nice and flat and then when we turn it right side out we have a lot of threads because those were our stay stitches. We'll pull those out in a little bit and give it a press and then it should lay nice and flat like this. Okay, if you're sewing view or collar B like I am, we are gonna take our pieces and sew them right sides together along the unnotched curve. So this one you'll see you'll have your notches down here and your markings. You wanna make sure you're sewing this side. Okay, now we are going to sew the collar on. If you're not sewing the collar version, go ahead and just skip this step. And pretty much everything else is exactly the same minus this collar. So the way I like to sew my collar is I like finding the center of it and then lining it up with the center back of my fabric and then just pin it in place and then pin it all the way around until your two notches are touching in the front this way. Okay, now that we have the collar pinned, we're just gonna do a stay stitch here as well. We've sewn the collar in place. Now we're gonna finish the front placket. And this is where it can get a little confusing, but I'm gonna try my best to walk us through this so that it's as simple as possible. 
Okay, so for step nine, it says to stitch the shoulder edge of the back neck, the back facing, and the facing placket, which we already did. Now it's saying to sew a quarter of an inch all the way along the entire facing. And then it's telling you to fold that over and press this down all the way around our entire facing. And when you get to some of these rounded edges along the back, you may need to snip those so that the fabric lays completely flat. And we're just gonna press that down all the way along the entire facing. This is what your facing will look like after you press those edges in a quarter of an inch. And you can see I got a little clip happy around here, but that's okay, do as many as you need for it to lay nice and flat. Okay, so for then step 10, with right sides together, pin facing to placket at neck and front edge. So for view B, we wanna make sure we're stitching it over the collar. So the collar will be sandwiched between our main bodice and the facing. Then we will be starting and stopping at the edge, just like we did when we were sewing it all the way around. Okay, now we're taking our front piece with right sides together. And we are going to take our facing that we just sewed the edges and that has the interfacing on it. And we're just going to line this up down here with the two dots. So we can just roll that down that we iron or pressed. And then we're just going to pin it all the way up and around. And then when we get to the collar piece, we wanna make sure the collar piece is facing down and that it's sandwiched in between the facing and the main fabric. Now we're gonna sew this all the way around at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now that we've finished sewing our facing in, I promise you guys that is probably the hardest part. It's kind of confusing with like sewing the facing and the placket. Okay, we're now going to turn our facing pieces flat and we're going to press them. So on the inside, we will be folding this down this way, just over the stitch of this one because we are gonna be stitching this placket down and we wanna make sure that it's catching when we're sewing this side. So be very mindful of that. So when you're folding the facing over, make sure the raw edge, the raw edges are being enclosed. So this is what the outside is gonna look like and this is what the inside looks like. Just making sure that all of your raw edges are facing in so that they're nice and enclosed. 
Okay, let me show you, you guys, my recording messed up and this whole process of me pinning this all the way around was not recording, but it was so much work. So what I do is kind of just flip the facing down so all of the raw edges are enclosed in there and then I hold it for dear life and then I make sure it's going over this seam here and I just pin it all the way around. I did that all through here. So all I do is like lay it flat, hold it, fold it over and then put the pin in on this side, making sure that the entire facing is over our stitches and raw edge and then we're gonna stitch in the ditch and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So what we're gonna be doing is, I'm gonna try to show you guys the best way that I can. We're gonna line up our presser foot, the center of our presser foot with this stitch and this is gonna be our ditch. Right through here where this seam is, We and you wanna make sure you're using matching thread for this. You're gonna carefully sew all the way around in that ditch. Just follow it all the way around. And while you're doing that, make sure you're catching this side of your facing. That's the whole point of stitching in the ditch to make sure this is nice and secure. I'm gonna try to show you how to do that on my sewing machine the best that I can. Okay, so on the right side of your fabric, you want to put your presser foot just in the center of that seam. And you're just gonna do this really slowly. And I'm telling you, it's so, so important to have matching thread for this because it will kind of blend in. I just kind of walk my needle through to see like if I need to adjust it or move it over so that it's right there in that ditch. And I'll just walk my, my needle through that just a little bit before I really commit. And then just go as slow as you need and try to stay right in that ditch as much as you can. And while you're doing this, the facing underneath will be catching so that it's pretty seamless all the way through. And once I get down far enough, I'll show you. Okay, so here is what your stitch in the ditch will look like from the front. You can see if you look very, very closely, the stitches in the ditch. And then when you turn it over, your facing will be stitched down all the way around. And there are some places that I did really well and some that could use some work like right here, but it's okay because it's on the inside and no one will ever see it. Okay, before we finish the placket, I like to clip my pieces together, how they're gonna lay. So I'll just overlap them, clip them together, and then I'll work on the bottom and this will help me keep it straight as I'm finishing up this placket. So at the end of our placket, you can see that we have our two facing sides and this center where we had cut to those small dots. So this is where this comes in handy. We're just gonna lay these 
fold all of these over on top of each other how I'm gonna push these through to the other side making sure that they're still overlapping the way that I want and I know this looks crazy right now but don't worry then I'm just gonna fold this up and with this little flap at the very bottom piece you're just gonna take it and overlap your facing pieces with that bottom piece because now we're gonna pin this these layers together and it's a pretty thick layer then we're just gonna stitch straight across here from dot to dot okay once we're done with that we're gonna fold this back down and this looks a little crazy right now but once we give it a good press and like lay everything flat and put the buttons in it's gonna look so good last thing and if you're I got marking pen everywhere, um, so ignore that. If you're um, having some puckering right here, just press that out. I know it looks a little crazy, but I promise you I had this issue as well. And once I gave it a good press, it just laid really flat. So now that we did that, I went and marked my um, where I'm going to do my top stitching. I'm going to straighten it out a little bit because it looks a little wonky. But I'm going to go over it with my marking pen and I am going to then stitch over it with my sewing machine. Okay, I've sewn this down. I need to take out my stay stitches so that this can lay flat. But before I do that, I'll do that at the end when I'm cutting all of my loose threads. Okay, now we're going to sew the sleeves, and this is a little out of order of the instructions as to sew the sleeve after you sew the underarm seam, but it's just it just makes more sense for me if I lay this flat with the front here and the back here, and then sew the sleeve on, and then fold it in half, and then sew the entire side seam together, and I'll show you how I'm doing that. So here's the bodice laying flat out, the back is this way, and the front is this way. Then I'm just going to lay my sleeve from here to here, making sure that the center notch is lining up. Then I'm just going to pin this all the way down. So there is my sleeve. So this is my bodice over here and this is my sleeve and I'm gonna sew this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I've sewn the sleeve on. So now this is the sleeve and this is the side seam. Now I'm gonna turn this right sides together and I am gonna sew this all the way down this way. I'm gonna pin the sleeves together, the sleeve seams there, and then this is the underarm seam and the side seam. And then I'm gonna sew this all the way down at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I'm also gonna overlock and press the seam flat. Okay, now that we finished the side seams, I overlocked mine and pressed them. Now we're going to move on to the pockets. For the pockets, you're going to fold over the top edge about a quarter of an inch. And then you're going to fold it back right where those dots are. And we're just going to sew this, sew this top part down here. And then along these curves right here, we're going to do a long stitch so that we can ease the curve in as we're sewing them down. Okay, before we get started on the rest of the pockets, I'm just going to trim the edges up here so that we can lay this nice and flat. So that when we turn these right side out, we can just have them here. And then now since we've done this long stitch here... 
we can go ahead and use this stitch line as a guide when we're trying to lay our curved edge flat. And this is why we cut those little notches into our fabric. This helps it lay nice and flat so that it's not super bulky. And then here is how it looks on the outside. And then you can play around with it if it doesn't look right. Like mine was a little funky right there. And then I'm going to go and press it all flat. And then I'm going to do a top stitch up here. I went and pressed my pocket flat. And this is what it looks like on the back side. And this is the front. And I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this down. Now we're gonna bring our romper back over and we're gonna open it up and make sure you're only doing this through one layer of your romper. I kind of open it up and push the other layer back and make sure there's no other fabric underneath where we're gonna be pinning the pockets around. So here are my two dots. These are on the sides. So this is the side front and the side back. And then we're gonna take our pocket and our dots are still going to be there around there somewhere. I redrew mine so that you can see it. And you're just going to pin them all the way around at the two dots that are on your rumper. Okay, now that my pocket is completely pinned, I like to use a lot of pins because I don't want anything moving or shifting around. I am just gonna go stitch my pocket all the way around just at the edge. You can do a double stitch if you'd like. If you're using something that's a little more heavy weight, that would be really cute to do like a double stitching. I'm just gonna do mine a quarter of an inch all the way around, making sure to back stitch at the start and end of each pocket. Pockets are sewn. I'm just going to go ahead and snip off these threads. And then this is also a good time to take off your stitching if it's showing from when we tucked the edges in. Okay, for the bottom part of the sleeves, I did a gather stitch around the wrist. And then we're going to sew our sleeve bands. We're going to sew them right sides together along this side at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. We've sewn our bands. We are gonna turn them out. So we're gonna have the wrong sides together. And I'm just gonna line this up here where the seams are, and I'm just gonna turn it out. And then we're gonna quarter our bands. So we're gonna put one, we're gonna put a pin right here where the seam is, and then directly across from it, that's where our notches are gonna be that we cut earlier, or that we marked. And we're gonna put another pin in that, and then we're gonna line these two up together. And then we're gonna put a pin here and here on each side, opposite from each other. Okay, 
So we have it quartered here. Now we're just going to do the same thing on this one. Okay, now we're going to gather our wristband here so that it fits into our little cuffs. Okay, and then I'm going to take my cuff here and I'm going to line it up with the underarm seam of my sleeve. So I'm just going to put this right through here with right sides together. I'm just going to line this up here. I'm going to spread out my gathers, kind of make them a little more even. And then I'm going to pull my threads through here so that they're all through here. I'm going to go sew this at 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, and then I'm also going to overlock it. Okay, here is our cute little sleeve. It's so voluminous. It has so much volume in it. Okay, so we're going to take our gusset piece, and we are going to make sure this is right sides together. And we're going to match up our notches here. Here are my notches. And we're just going to pin this along the front and the back all the way across. Okay, so this is the back, and then we are going to do the front over here. Okay, now we have our gusset and we are going to sew these at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then I'm also going to overlock mine and I'm going to press them in towards each other. Okay, now that our gusset is sewn, we are going to do the hem at the bottom. So for this, it calls for a narrow hem, which is just two small flips, maybe at like a quarter of an inch each, but... I am a shorty and I kind of like the way a bigger hem looks. So I'll probably do mine a quarter of an inch and then maybe like a full inch. And I think that would be really cute too. But try this on and measure how short you want it to be because I am only five foot and I like mine to be pretty short. I don't like wearing long rompers. So I'm going to go try mine on and then I'm going to hem mine. Okay, I finished my hems and now I'm going to go ahead and sew my buttonholes. After all of this hard work, you might need to retrace where you're going to sew them. Mine, oh, that's a white pen. Here we go. Mine kind of rubbed off as I was pressing and getting everything ready. So I'm just going to redraw mine on here so that I have nice bright guides so that I know where I'm adding my buttonholes. So go over to your machine and sew your buttonholes however your machine works. Mine has an automatic buttonhole maker so I am just gonna let my machine do its thing and then I'll meet you back up here. Okay, here is how my romper turned out. I am obsessed with the color, the buttons, 
this pattern. It's so, so cute. I love the big sleeves. You guys know I'm a big fan of big sleeves. I think this is such a great summer staple. It's going to be so nice to just toss it on and go to the beach or the pool. I hope you guys enjoyed this sew along. If you make this pattern, please tag me at Alyssa Threads all across any social media platforms. I can't wait to see it.